All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Pistolka, and I am excited today because I've got Scott Lezak here with Castle Rock Landscaping Company out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. And today we are going to be talking about business owner development for success. Scott, welcome. Thanks, Damon. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, man. I am just jacked to have you on here today because we're going to have some fun. I mean, the the uh, the energy from you as we've talked over time and the stuff that you do and the and the the just the the positive that you bring to your business leadership and and the desire to learn I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us today. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Scott, as I always like to do on the on the faces of business, let's start out with your background. Let's kind of let's kind of talk about you know how you arrived where you're at today oh man it's been a long journey (laughs) it's been an awesome journey i I love every minute of it um to answer that directly i I love to say i started as a landscaper and i've turned into a businessman over the years Uh, that's essentially what's happened started with a passion for the industry um went back i started being really interested in landscaping when i was 14. Uh, my dad built a homeowner project at our house. And I use that term very lightly. We're talking like 4,000 square foot paver driveway, boulder retaining walls. And I mean, hundreds of tons of boulders, uh, steps, walkways, planting. It was a three month project for us. We built it with a Kubota and a whole lot of back, uh, back muscles. And um, that got me into it. I, I really enjoyed that process. I enjoyed taking something that didn't look like anything or, you know, we tore something out. So there was something there, but yeah. making this magnificent masterpiece. Um, so I started a little bit then and was like, you know what? Hey, I want to buy a four wheeler. I want to buy this. I'm going to go out and try and make some money. And yeah. uh, a friend of mine and I started up when we were 14 cutting shrubs at his neighbor's houses. He lived in a development. I didn't. So his, mm-hmm. his uh, area made a little bit more sense. And uh, yep. we made a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks. I don't remember what the number was over that summer. And it was really cool. And um, he decided he wanted to go work for somebody else. So, um, my dad and I started talking about it a little bit. My dad was like, heck yeah, let's do this. Um, he yeah. was a entrepreneur, um, incredible man in his real career. He was a consultant uh, in hazardous materials, terrorism response, emergency response, uh, did stuff for the FBI, oh, uh, wow. State State Department, National Fire Academy. Um, hazardous materials response essentially was written by him back in the late 70s, early 80s, and it, it has evolved into something now. Anyway. That's a that's a little bit of his background to say, heck, yeah, man, let's do this. You know, he, he already had the yeah. entrepreneurial spirit and some knowledge with it. And um, we started doing it. He he would drive me around in a 1978 F-150 uh, that I was 15. I couldn't drive yet. I would follow him down the road in our Kubota tractor. And we went yeah. out and we started as a hardscape company doing rock work, pavers and everything like that. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. kind of backwards of most landscape companies. Um, by the time I turned 17, uh, we, we recognized we were making some real money. So it got to the point that uh, we established a sole proprietorship in his name because of yeah. my age and his knowledge of how to do that. I had no idea about business. So he said, uh-huh. hey, we need to establish something. Let's do this. And uh, I trusted him. He knew what he was doing. Um, so at that point in time, we really started making you know, for a 17 year old kid, what was good? Yeah. You know, thousands of dollars. I, I, in that time period, I bought like two or three, four wheelers, two snowmobiles. And like, you know, I was going nuts. I was just having fun with it. And, um, I got to a point my senior year of high school that I was either going to Penn state for landscape contracting, or I wasn't going to college and I was going to keep running a landscape company, but either way, the landscape company was the destination that that was what I wanted to do. Um, retrospect i'm really happy i got into penn state because i think that yeah. would have been i would not be where i am today without that education that's for sure um so that's you know 2005 to 2010 time frame is when i was at penn state got a degree in landscape contracting and design minored in arbor culture so i was an arborist for a while and you okay. know, climbing trees and doing big tree removals and pruning and stuff like that and um 2011 we established castle rocks landscape company which is the llc we operate under today uh, my dad and I still own it 50 50. Uh, we yeah. have talked about a buyout and a, a buyout is going to be happening, but it hasn't happened yet. So he's still in yeah. the mix. And, yeah. uh, you know, that that's kind of the background with it. The, the front ground is where we really made the traction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So how many to, to go to a place like Penn State, you wouldn't think of landscaping. Yeah, it, it's a very small 
school through the horticulture horticulture department at Penn yeah. State. Um, yeah. I graduated with right around 15 people in my class and graduating wow. classes are five to 15 people. So it created a really neat uh, atmosphere. You know, you're at this yeah. monster school of 40,000 yeah. students, but your yeah. tight knit group is 20 people. And, you know, it, it just had the small school feeling. And when we got into business classes and accounting classes and stuff like that, sitting in forums of hundreds of people, it was, it was like still overwhelming, even in school, because yeah. our classes were so tight knit. And uh, But with that, you know, created a brotherhood. And, I, you know, we still yeah. two guys that I went to college with work for Castle Rocks now and we're really wow. tight. And a lot of the guys we studied That's with cool. are still really good friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. And and uh, so I'll just ask a couple of questions about that. I mean, you you credit it for helping you be where you are today. So you thought that was a that the education was pretty beneficial in that regards. Then oh, it was absolutely. a good, good program. Good. Yeah, that's cool. Program was incredible. Plant knowledge, science knowledge, uh, design knowledge. You know, I had to focus yeah. in design. So a lot of what we did was form and function um, architecture. Uh, more on a residential side, that's that's kind of yeah. a big difference between the landscape architecture program and the landscape contracting program. Landscape contracting, you get the science and the residential side of things with some commercial exposure. I don't, I don't want to stray too far there. And landscape yeah. architecture is less science and more big open urban spaces. Um, oh, but yeah, it, it was an incredible education from that standpoint. Cool. But the best education I got there was I learned how to learn. We had professors that would just push us and you ask them a question. They're like, yep, I absolutely know that answer. Go find it yourself. And let's talk about it once you think you have the right answer. And just that approach to education was new to me. And it, it taught me how to learn. That's the most valuable education I got in school. Taught you how to learn. Awesome. That That is because that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more as, <laughs> as we get on here is just the importance of that continuous learning as we, as we move forward. So, so you're, so you're out of college and, and so when you got out of college and trying to remember back to when I got out of college, <laughs> you, you, you think about what you thought on those days coming out and what you were going to do with your business. What were some of the things that you go, Oh man, I really wasn't thinking right. Well, one of the biggest ones that I had a piece of advice from one of the professors, um, Dan Stearns, he told me his biggest number one piece of advice for my professional career was to go work for somebody else for a little while. And egotistical early 20s me was like, yeah, OK, Dan, I'm, I'm not doing that. I got this awesome business doing one hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars in revenue a year right now. Why would I ever do that? And yeah. uh, in retrospect, I should have listened to him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd be uh, millions ahead and thousands that's... and thousands ahead and mistakes and everything. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. The the best piece of advice you got coming out of college is work for someone else for a while. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. I tell you, some of that some of that mentorship you can get through that and the learning you get on someone else's dime is, it, like you said, causes you're not losing that money learning. Yep. And I mean, oh. not only that, but nobody really has to lose the money because usually if you work for an established yeah. organization, they already made the mistakes. So you're learning yeah. right off the bat instead of making those mistakes, which yeah. for me, I mean, I, I'm kind of hard knock, hard knock. I'm I'm stubborn. I, I got to make those mistakes. That's how I learn the best, unfortunately. You know? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I think, you know, not unlike many business owners, just to go out and do it on your own, you have to be pretty um, steadfast. I would say and stubborn. Yeah. yeah. You can say stubborn. Yeah. Hard headed. You can say that too, but <laughs> it's, it is, you really have to be, to be a business owner. You have to um, believe in your decision-making and, and live with the mistakes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So as you, as you got, got out and you started running your business, what are some of the first things that, that you began to go, wow, this is a lot different than, than I really thought it was going to be. A lot of that, I have just recently started saying one of the biggest mistakes I have made in my professional career is assuming other people think like me. And the reality uh, that the further in my career I get, I learn, um, not saying this egotistically either, but I learn I have a very different thought process and a very different processing method uh, than most people have. 
And I think that's probably true for most entrepreneurs because you get into certain areas and there's a difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur. I'm talking true entrepreneurs who can see the vision and see the see what they want in the future and put it into action. That's what an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is to me. And when you get into conversations with people that have that uh, truly entrepreneurial mindset, it just clicks. You can talk for hours and hours. Yeah. And, um, you know, that that was tough coming out because I thought I had huge dreams. I saw exactly where I wanted this company, you know, out of school. I saw almost exactly where we are today. I had the vision. I had no no comprehension of what it would take to actually get there, though. So in my head, I had this multi-million dollar awesome landscape company. Yeah. And in reality, I had two employees and an old beat up pickup truck. So, you know, that that was hard to bridge that gap. I knew where I wanted to go, but I had very limited knowledge on how to recover the proper overhead. Uh, you know, the difference between what a direct cost and an indirect cost was at that time, what a gross margin versus a net margin was. And, you know, I had to learn all that stuff after school because our school was so science and design built mm -hmm. based. It wasn't really business based. Yeah. Um, so, you know, long story short, I got out of school and I was living in my parents' basement. I bought a camper for $200 and parked it in their backyard. So if I didn't want to be in the house, I was in the camper and I was making 300 bucks bi-weekly. That was my paycheck for quite a few years to get it off the ground. But I was determined, yeah. man. It, it was my dream. It was my passion. That was it. If that's what it took, that's what it took. I was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's an awesome story, though. <laughs> I mean, it's dedication and persistence. And that's, that's what I think a lot of people that um, have not, had to go through that initial startup phase in a business, you know, minus the people that go out and get the huge funding and, you know, run off to do something like a Uber or somebody like that, where they can do that. I mean, they've gone through an actual bootstrapping startup is that that persistence and desire it takes just to push through those first couple of years. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be some time where you're just shaking your head going, oh, no. You know, yeah, when the I, when your main piece of equipment breaks down and it's a few thousand dollars to fix it or, or yep. you know, a key employee just decides I, I've got to go someplace else or something like that. Well, it's, it's funny you say that. We had a dump truck at one point in time for uh, two to three years that wouldn't dump we couldn't afford to fix the dump body something happened with the dump pump and i mean it was in the end it was like a 500 dollars repair we didn't have the cash to fix it though so we had yeah. this dump truck that we're shoveling dirt and stone out of the back not able to dump it and uh you know i mean that was the that was the grit had a grit through that with determination and get you know get through that yeah, <laughs> yeah. wow that's something that's something so as you were growing you know your business there's kind of like these plateaus where you you get to a point and the business needs to change a bit to be able to go to the next plateau and it needs to change a bit beyond that. And then it gets to a certain point, it's like adding duplicates and things like that. Um, so what did you find about personally doing this and, you know, how you saw those, those points and what, how did you identify them first of all, and then how'd you work through some of them? So a lot of what held me back over the years was me. I was my biggest roadblock. Um, and, you know, that, that really, in hindsight, I can look at that and dissect that even more and see how real that really was. Um, I had these ambitions to do all kinds of stuff, um, but I was strapped in. I was selling. I was designing. I was building mm -hmm. patios. I was cutting trees down. I was I was working a lot and, uh, you know, didn't have much to show for that. Um I was also drinking a lot. You know, when I was younger, I, I drank a lot. And that was that was one of my biggest uh, one of my biggest challenges to get over. I've currently been sober since June 1st of 2018. And I had to go to rehab to get sober. That, that was how mm -hmm. bad my drinking program problem. Yeah. was. So um, if that hadn't been in the picture, there would probably be something different. But really, as I dissect that and really grow personally now and can look back at that time. Yeah. Um, a lot of my drinking stemmed from the stress from the company. A lot of my drinking, yeah. you know, I had some PTSD in there. I was a firefighter uh, for quite a while, saw some really nasty stuff. So, I mean, I had a couple of variables that were very challenging for me to get past. Yeah. Um, and that, that was hard. That, that was really hard. No doubt. No doubt. And that, and that, like you said, something like that, that's, that's, as that gnaws at you for the years, both the something like a PTSD kind of thing and the drinking. It's just, it just compounds with the fact that you're trying to work really, really hard in your business. And that's, 
while you don't realize it, it's probably drawing, uh, holding you back as well because you don't feel as well as you could and you're not as, you know, it's clear and, and your, your mind isn't as, as, as I guess, I don't know, just as focused as it could be. Yeah. Th there's a huge reality that the clarity of mind alone, when you're not using a substance, um, yeah. you know, that, that still continues. I'm almost four years sober at this point and I still feel differences every now and then I'll wake up and be like, Oh man, I'm, I'm thinking clear today. What's happening. And it doesn't go away. And yeah. I still attribute that to getting some of the alcohol and some of the damage I did in my younger years out of my system. Yeah. I tell you, that's, that's one of the things that I think that people that, are uh, well business owners right business owners because you you as a business owner you're all over you know like you said you're doing all these things and and just the importance of of clarity and um i i don't honestly i honestly don't i I've, hey i've had my periods in my life where i've drank enough to where where i've had people tell me <laughs> you need to and i've been lucky enough to to, to stop without the rehab but the the the, the difference in clarity is, is so much. And when you, when you get, uh, as you say, sober and you, and you have that clarity, it's really, I think it would be really hard to go back because you just can't do it. I don't, I just don't know how you do it long-term in, in my mind anyway. It's the reward, that mental clarity. And yeah. you know, really my motivation to stay sober at the beginning, it was just, I don't want to lose this stuff. I don't want to go back to where I was. That was yeah. awful. Yeah. I worked so hard to yeah. get here. I got to stay out yeah. now that it's getting more long-term. I don't ever want to, I don't ever have to feel a hangover again. And I don't ever want to feel a hangover. Again. Yeah. And yeah. my mental clarity on a day-to-day -day basis is just incredible. I am so grateful for my entire experience. Um, you know, it, it was, it brought some tremendous failures, tremendous hard times, but yeah. it really inspired me to grow personally. And that was my personal growth stems directly from my recovery journey. I That's started learning cool. ways to stay sober. I started learning ways to think different. You know, a big yeah. thing they say in AA is you come for your drinking and you stay for your thinking. And that there's nothing more true than that. Wow. Like you start thinking about it and you start thinking differently. Then you start processing differently. Then you realize how crazy you were thinking before, how egotistical I was before. And that's when the power really changes, when you start recognizing mm -hmm. that ego and like, OK, I got to scale back. And I feel like a lot of business owners uh, have that ego problem. And you know, saying that in a good way for anybody listening to this, too, you have an ego problem that's hard to let go. I can do this the best. Nobody's going to have the passion that I have. Yeah. That's what we're told in our society. Nobody's ever going to have the passion of the business owner. Couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, I, I have seven employees I could introduce you to on the spot that have as much passion about the business as I have. And they're working their butts off every day with me. And everything they're doing, they're doing 10 times better than I ever did it because they're focusing on that one task. I had a million tasks. I had a foggy brain from alcohol. I had all kinds of other stuff going on. They're doing 10 times better than I could ever do in that position. That's awesome. We can stop right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because I mean, seriously, you you just laid it out there like that. Like I think a lot of um, a lot of people don't understand, and the what you've decoded or found how how to lead and work with the people that are in your business is really special because once you get that kind of group around you and they feel it and you feel it, you create something that is going to be very hard for other people in your industry to keep up with. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's, that's cool. <laughs> that, that that's really cool. Cause you know, I was looking, I was looking at your, your website for a second and I thought there was, there was something, um, there was a couple things that are on your core values. And first of all, I, I don't ever think I've seen a landscaping company that has 10 core values on it, but <laughs> that's cool. The, the couple of them that I really liked is smiling, happy faces. That yeah. was, that was one. I mean, because as, as it says there and you know, and I, I, you know, because of your core values and stuff, just being, just being smiling around people makes them feel better. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that you can't smile when you're doing hard work. It doesn't mean <laughs> you can't smile like that. You can still smile. It might suck, but you can still smile about it. Yep. And I like that. And then, yeah, but predictability was another one which i think in your in your industry that's awesome you can the the better you can be there when you when you say you're going to be you're just going to stand out the one i was going to ask you about though it says no resistance what does that mean 
no resistance. Don't don't resist change. Um, you know, that's a big one. People resist change all the time. The way we did it yesterday is, you know, we got to keep doing it that way. That's the way we've always done it. That doesn't work. Okay. The way we've always done it needs to be adapted. Um, you know, don't resist what's coming. Go with the flow. Uh, you know, just kind of go with it. Very In our cool. industry, I mean, it, it's uh, we have equated it to almost a militant type of mindset that you need to really succeed in this. And I, I don't want to compare us to military. I'm not trying to do that, but a militant style mindset to persevere through a 10 hour day at 105 degrees outside, sweating yeah. your butt off and so hot you can't eat and you're losing energy from not eating. And, you know, it's tough. It takes the right type of mindset. So no resistance. Don't let that resist. Just keep going, keep working, keep pushing through, take your breaks, take awesome. care of yourself. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. That's cool. So, as you've as you've gone down the road now, you've added more people, and as you as you add these people, what are some of the things that you've had to that you've kind of come across in your professional development? Going, wow, we don't just wake up being a business owner knowing everything we know. Oh man, <laughs> oh, you just opened a can of worms with that one. I could talk for days <laughs> on this. <laughs> Um, I fully shifted from being a landscaper to a business owner. I would say the only education that I use anymore in my day-to-day -day job from school is the ability to learn. Like I said, the most important thing I learned was the ability yeah. to learn. And um, I started recognizing 2013, 2014 timeframe, I would say that to get somewhere else, I needed to learn more about business. At that point in time, I never equated systems to being as important mm -hmm. as they are in business. Uh, you know, processes was a foreign language. I heard about it. Got to build processes. Got to do this. Uh, yeah. I didn't know how to do it. Didn't know what that exactly meant. Um, so I uh, I was given the book E Myth. Uh, you know, best best business yeah. book out there. If you've never been through it, yeah. I, I've read that probably twenty times now since I got it. But I was gifted that by uh, by a man who was named uh, is Tim Smith. He was the CEO of Landopt at that point in time, and I saw that company. It was it was a coaching consulting uh, network company, and uh, you know at that time we were doing about two hundred thousand a, a year, and I saw some companies really grow within them, and I was like, hey, I got to get in on this. And they didn't take anybody under a million in revenue because of the way it works and the amount of money that it costs to get mm -hmm. what they had. So uh, that really sparked the interest. And, you know, I, I haven't talked to Tim since he sent that book. And I, I would love to reach out to him, just let him know how impactful he's been on my career because of that book. That's where my journey started learning about business. though. and from there, I, it got me running and running and thinking, yeah. OK, systems, processes. What can I do with this? We got to develop systems. OK, that's great. Got through the book. And it's like I got to build these systems. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was the next step. Then I had to figure out what is that system? How can I do that? And, you know, my dad was instrumental in the early days helping me with that mm -hmm. because of his knowledge of incident command and um, doing things on the emergency side of things. He was a systems guy from incident command. Yeah. So he started equating that incident command structure to business. And I was a firefighter, wow. so I understood the incident command system. And I was like, oh, yeah, OK. So we really built the original systems and processes that we had directly related to emergency response. And that was kind of where I started bridging that gap. And from there, it's turned into more books and leadership books, John Maxwell and other business books and just kind of learning more and more. And the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. And it's it's truly an addiction at this point. I mean, I live 45 minutes yeah. away from my office and I am listening to audio books an hour and a half minimum every day on my way to and from work then. So mm -hmm. it, it's incredible. And I just can't get enough information into my head anymore. Um, yeah. But to get back to the root of that question, I mean, we have to recognize that we either can stay complacent. We can either stay exactly where we are. We need to learn new skills to keep pushing it forward. And I'm not a complacent guy. Even when I was drinking a lot and everything, I always had high dreams. That didn't affect any of that. It, it might have affected my actions to get there, but it did not affect my drive. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I really wanted to learn. And I always had I had this huge goal of building a landscape company that was worth two million dollars. Well, guess what? Today we're sitting here. I have a two and a half million dollar landscape company. And it's like yeah. not even getting started yet. You know, this is just yeah. scratching the surface. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty cool That's to see awesome. how fast that progressed. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and like you said, I think a lot of a lot of business business owners, a first of all, um, sometimes are are embarrassed because they don't know some things right and i've i've you know some of the people i i talk with they're like well i really should know that well why the hell do you really think you should know that 
that's something about finance or that's something about, like you said, systems and processes. If you, if you haven't specifically went down that path to know that, why do you think you should know it? Yep. Maybe it's something, <laughs> you know, you, you think that should be one of the things you learn about, you've heard about, but we don't just know this from birth or something like that, or because you decided to be in business. It's the like you said. Entrepreneurial seizure in Michael Gerber's words. <laughs> yep. yep. That's for sure. That's for sure. And it's, it's one of these things that we, we do need to study about business. And I don't mean the grandiose plan of business, but just like you said, take, take something like the E-Myth that has simple fundamental things in it and build upon that with the other specific knowledge that you need and, and go from there. Because as you said, if you don't keep, I think anyway, and I think you'll agree, if you don't continue building your skills and building your team skills and then and then preparing for what's next, because looking ahead as you as the business owner, what are you going to look like next year? What are you going to look like two years from now or three years? You may not know. It's still kind of fuzzy. But if you don't think about it today and get prepared for it tomorrow, um, you, you just you're going to be caught flat footed. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with that. And I, I would add to that. Um, we need to be developing ourselves. We, you know, personal yeah. development is first. And so many people get caught up in looking at money and wanting to make money. And yeah, we're all in business to make money. But yep. I have embraced over the past couple of years, the mindset that money's not real because it's really not. I mean, to take a, a saying from Thane here, it's like oxygen. When you need it, there's no substitute. So, you know, in that respect, it's definitely a real tangible thing. But at the end of the day in business, money's a math equation. It does. You don't have yeah. to look at it as capital. You don't have to look at it as a tangible thing. And I was so focused on making money and building this. Look at me. I'm a big landscape company. I, I want to make money in my younger years that I lost myself in everything else. Yeah. And when I made that switch to say, no, money's not real. I'm not working for money. I'm working for the experience I can give to people. And quality was always big. That was one of my big motivators early okay. on, but it was an egotistical motivator early on. Like, yeah, I want to be the best. I want to have this high quality company. And as we've grown, it's like, yeah, I want to have high quality, but how can we be better tomorrow than we were today? And how can we continue to raise value in this company? How can we continue to raise value to our clients and our industry? It's about the industry as a whole. I want to affect as many people in this industry and beyond as I can. That's my motivation now. And guess what? Since that shift has changed, I'm making more money than I ever made before and buy a lot. And that entire shift changed. And now I can give some of that money away. That's how much I'm making. It's like, yep, yeah. take this. And when you start giving it away, guess what? You start making more. It's just, it's, yes. uh, you know, anybody that any of the financial books you read that say that stuff, it's real. I'm living that right now. And it's, it's just unbelievable. It's an unbelievable and rewarding feeling. And it has nothing to do with the money. The money's a byproduct of what I'm doing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because I think that's you, you hit one of the things I was hoping we'd talk about a little bit because we get so focused on the business, business, business. And I really think that there becomes a point that you can be the best landscaping business person ever, but you still can't get your business to grow because you're not ready for it personally. Uh, and, and that, prevents you from from really being the the person you need to be to find that next level of success you're you're absolutely right and to get there we have to grow ourselves first you know yeah. I, I i will say this very delicately but Numbers aren't everything in business. You know, they are. You have to really know your numbers. You have to know your production. Don't go out there and be, oh, Scott said the numbers don't matter. That's not at all what I'm saying. The numbers do matter. Yeah. But it's a math yeah. equation. Figure out the math there. Figure out how you can make everything work together. But what matters is you. You got to invest in yourself. Number one, ahead of anybody else, ahead of your family, ahead of your friends, ahead of your business, invest in yourself. It sounds really selfish in principle when you say it like that. However, it's, I assure you, it's the most selfless thing you can ever do. And the reason behind that is as you start growing, as you start developing, you become a person to give to everybody and every organization you're associated with that they never would have had exposure to if you weren't yep. growing that way. So really yep. from this quote unquote selfish act of focusing on me first, I'm giving a better me to everybody that's out there. And 
when we tandem that with consistent growth and consistency in our growth plans and guess what? Growth compounds. So we grow 1% a day within a year, we're growing 350% within five years. Holy cow. You're a different yeah. person in the best way possible. And that's been my experience. It started three and a half years ago when I decided I didn't want to drink anymore. And it was really, there was a lot of wounds to heal and a lot of, you know, I had, I had a pretty broken marriage at that point in time. You know, my wife was ready to leave me and she stuck it out just to see how this would go. And, um, you know, fixed everything with her yeah. slowly. It didn't happen overnight. It took oh, yeah. Yeah. months and months. I mean, our, our first reconnection yeah. was like four months after. And from yeah. there, everything just kept going and going. So you can't expect yeah. instant results, but they come. And if you put consistent effort in, they come faster and faster. Just look at an investment chart anywhere. That's exactly how personal growth works. When you look at compounding interest on an investment, that's exactly how personal growth works. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, Man, I can't. I'm, I'm just going to show a couple of one of the comments here. This one come up. It's yeah. You got Chad. <laughs> awesome. So awesome. yeah, it's good. Good to have him here today. That's just great to see that. Thanks for coming, Chad. And I can't. I'm so glad you brought this up because when you talk about and I, I don't care if you're running a business, you're working, you're, you're you're you know if you're doing whatever you're doing, investing in yourself to be a better person helps everyone around you. It'll help your, your long-term success, your family, your life. Cause when you think about it now and you think about just stay from last year to this year, do you think that your personal life is better because you're continuing to work on yourself from last year to this year? Absolutely. I will say from last week to this week, I'll go that, go. that close. But I mean, last year to this yeah. year, last year at this point in time, if you would have told me I'd be sitting here doing an interview with somebody like you, I would have said, really, is that where I'm at in a year? Like, I, I would have believed it, but I would have been like, I didn't, I didn't really see that coming. And, you know, yeah. everything that comes last year at this time, if you would have told me that I'd be involved in three different ventures instead of just Castle Rocks, I would have said, no way. That's not right. I, I have no ambitions. Yeah. I have no intentions of building other businesses. Well, guess what? I'm in three ventures right now. And two of yeah. them are making money and good money. Yeah. And one of them's yeah. really close to making money. We have the plans in place to have that one make money. So it, it's really, awesome. it's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. And when you think about this, you said you're better for everyone. And this is one of the things that I did want to want to touch on. You talk about business and those kind of things, but your family and personal relationships, that that I think really is one of the things that we think as business owners, that's always going to suffer. Everybody yeah. thinks that. And I, I and, you know, unfortunately, when you look at people that are my age or like your father's age, it's like, um, uh, we grew up in a time when that was kind of the way it was, yeah. you know, if you were really, really a high level or successful, super successful, it was awful hard because you were gone and it just, it just didn't turn out right. And I think one of the, the fortunate things by really investing in yourself, you understand how to have success in business and still have success in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, personal life is, that was a struggle for me, actually. I mm -hmm. had a very definitive, you know, work life balance. People say that all the time. I've grown to really not like that term at all. We need life balance. Yeah. We live one life. Enjoy your work, enjoy yeah. your life. But the reason for that personally is I would give my all at work. I would be leading this team, I'd be helping people grow. And I'd come home so exhausted from that that I'd be cranky and irritable with my family. And, you know, I'm vulnerable enough to say that. I've probably been a, a less than the husband I should have been to my wife and less than the father I should have been to my kids a lot. So I took that and I got to a point in my personal growth. I was like, I got to start fo focusing at home. And yeah. just recently, you know, my wife and I started talking like we got to we're, we're both really uh, all about developing ourselves, but our relationships kind of stagnant, not in a bad way. We have a great relationship, yeah. but it's kind of stagnant right now. How can we grow together? And, um, you know, that's what we're working on now. And we're, we're figuring nice. out new stuff, new ways to talk. And sometimes those talks are arguments first, and then they turn into yeah. a good conversation oh, yeah. later. But that, yeah. that's the reality of it. And, you know, my personal growth on the professional side has allowed me to do that. But with focusing on life balance, 
I'm taking the tools that I have at work and using them at home now and getting better and better at that. And I enjoy my work and I'm not separating the two. And if I have to jump in at 6.05 PM to have a conversation with you, my wife is downstairs fully supporting this and she does the same thing some nights. And we just, yeah. we have good life balance. It has nothing to do with work and life because it's all one life though. That that's, you said that when we've been talking before and I, it, for me, it's been years and years and years of that. And you're right. It's sometimes it's a, it's a little give and take and sometimes, but it is one, it is one life and yep. people talk about turning it off. Well, if you're a business owner or you're really passionate about what you do, you don't really turn it off that well. It just kind of melds together, but yep. this melding of it, you need to make sure that it's, it's cohesive and everybody's in it with you in the right, the right portions so that it, it, it does work. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. So what's been the funnest thing about your personal growth? I mean, what were some of the stuff that you, you just went, wow, I never even thought about that. Now that I think about it, I'm like, that is so cool that I learned that. Humility and open-mindedness, you know, just the ability to be vulnerable with myself, the ability to sit here and tell you that, Hey, I need to work on myself at home. Cause I come home cranky. Yeah. Sometimes there's a point in my life. I never would have admitted that. And I would have been 10 times crankier than I've ever been too. But I, I just, that is so rewarding. And, you know, to get to the point that my ego is on the back burner and I don't want to look, steer you wrong and let you think I have my ego completely under control. She still yeah. cre creeps up all the time, but <laughs> I yeah. recognize it now. And, you know, yeah. even if I get through uh, a reaction that should have been a response or something, I'll get to the end of that and be like, whoa, I don't like how I did that. Do I need an apology? Do I have to say something to wh whoever was involved with that? Or do I simply need to know that that just happened and try and make sure that doesn't happen again? And the self-awareness that comes with the personal growth, I would say that's the number one. The number two is the ability yeah. to give it back to other people, though. Um, you know, it's it really started with Castle Rocks of I just want to give this back to our people. And, you mm -hmm. know, you saw, saw Chad just comment right there. Chad's yep. our operations manager. And, um, you know, he came into our company beat up, broken, uh, not sure where he wanted to go in life. And, uh, you know, I gave him an opportunity because he was a great guy. And, uh, man, he just grew and grew. And now he's running literally our entire operations for the whole company. He schedules, he manages crews, he buys uh, materials. He's out there watching the snow. He's getting up at 1 a.m. to go out and check parking lots to see if we need salt, calling crews in. And what that wow. has done, you know, my help with him and his drive. I mean, I don't want to take the, I don't want to mm -hmm. take the credit for that. It's definitely his drive. But what that has done for me is created a sense of trust. Like I don't wake up at 1am because I know Chad's got it and I know he's going to do one hell of a good job and it's probably going to be a lot better than it would have been with me because I would have struggled to get out of bed at one o'clock to go check those parking lots. And, yeah. uh, you know, just using that as one example, it's, it's so rewarding to help other people. And that led me into my next venture, which is inspire you of helping more people. I realized how limiting the landscape company is. I'm only ever going to be able to impact a couple hundred employees through the landscape company. Whereas if I branch out even further, I can reach more people and I can help other business owners take the same approach in their companies to help hundreds of people through there. So it just, com again, compounding the effect that it has. And one of yeah. the motivations there is helping these people and helping spread that, not the money I can make with it. That is not the motivation for this. It's spreading the personal growth and the, the journey I've been on. Yeah. So one of the things, first of all, I want to thank Paul. We got... Paul Wright from the UK. Oh, awesome. Uh, great hey, Paul. to see you, Paul. And uh, then we got Lori talking about awesome there. Thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Good to see you, Lori. Thanks for coming. The, the thing that I find, and I'm just going to ask you a question. As you, as you help more people, does it feel, and I'm going to use a term that I know it's overused, but <laughs> do you feel that your cup just gets fuller and fuller and fuller and you just can't, it just keeps going forward. The more you help people, it doesn't, it, I mean, like with, with me and personally, I think the more people I help, the more people I feel I can help and I need to and want to help. Absolutely. It just, it's, it Absolutely. just drives you. It's just like, when you start, it's just like, I got to help a million people now. And now it's 10 million, yep. you know, or the whole damn world, if you could. Yep. Is that like I, that for the you? More, the more you help, the more you want to help it, it. It's insane. And you know, I just feel good. Like I come home yeah. and I feel good. Like today I had three separate one hour sessions with people just talking about personal growth. And I was so excited when I got home, I was just happy. I gave the kids a big hug, had a great dinner with the family and the days that I'm working on like finance stuff or, you know, 
something yeah. that I'm just so mentally exhausted from. It's different. I come home yeah. and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> All right. Hey, yeah. hey guys, great to see you. I'm really tired. But I'm just like, I'm energized. I'm rejuvenated with it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I just yeah, the, the cup keeps getting fuller and fuller, and I just keep wanting to add to it. I I need a bigger cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you started with, with your other company. So that's cool. So what are you what what are you doing with your other company? It's Inspire You, right? I, I... In, inspire You. Yep. Yeah. So what we're doing is um, you know doing weekly coaching sessions there's going to be nice. programs that are developed in the future i mean this is very new we we just uh yeah. we formed the llc last may may to reserve the name um because yeah. i like the name and i had no idea where i was going to go with it and i'm like all right it's yep. available I'm, I'm establishing the llc and if it takes me five years to do something with this that's fine and um i met thane isaacs in august at the simon symposium and yep. uh he was he was a speaker and uh I really, really loved his presentation, like his energy and my energy. It was just like, oh, man, I got involved with his presentation. Um, saw him sitting at the lunch table next to Jody Lennis. And I was like, I'm going to sit down with these guys and have a conversation. Thane lives in Vermont. I want to move to New Hampshire at some point or at least buy a house in New Hampshire so I can spend a good amount of time up there. And nice. uh, I sat down and said, hey, Thane, uh, your presentation was awesome. I see myself in the future and what you're doing right now. I want to live in New England, Northern New England, and I want to get into consulting in some way, shape or form. What's your advice? He said to me, what are you waiting for? Start today. Those words literally changed my life. If you're listening to this thing, that changed my life, man. <laughs> um, That's awesome. So I started. You, know, you don't tell me to do something, not expect me to do it because I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I, I started yeah. and started getting more detailed. And, you know, I'm I'm a business guy now, so I can't yeah. just jump off the cliff and hope yeah. I have a soft landing. So I started putting pieces together. I started putting presentations together. I started talking to more and more people about it and practicing what I was going to say. And one of my big things was imposter syndrome. Like, How can I coach people? Do I have enough experience to do this? I don't mm -hmm. have a degree in this. I, I'm not a counselor. You know, it, it's coaching yeah. is dangerously close to counseling. And um, the more people I started talking to, I was like, wow my life experiences probably qualify me more than people that actually have degrees yeah. in some of this stuff. Some of the things yep. I've been through. So that grew, that grew me to the point of really getting to the point. And now I have several paid clients that I'm working with and it's just getting more and more fulfilling and just awesome. It, it's absolutely incredible. I, I'm almost speechless about how incredible it is. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, we got Peggy saying hello. So oh, hey, Peggy. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, it's cool to see. I mean, the as you said, the you know, getting this and putting it together and starting to execute on Inspire You and and working down that road as well, and and how the investing in yourself and becoming better has just driven that desire to help you know you grow, grow your business, and then help others through your other businesses to be better themselves. So, what what are some of the things that are for the future? with you what's what's happening what do you see in the next five years what do you want to be doing sky's not the limit because i i'm pretty sure i'm at the sky right now i want to see what's next i mean i'm i'm beyond where i ever thought i was going to be so inspire you is going to be big um you know we're, yeah. we're growing we're growing castle rocks and i have strategically been pulling back further and further from castle rocks for a two-year period now and we're adding some key positions right now that are going to allow that pullback even further um i've transparently talked to my team about exactly what my intentions are and pulling back a little bit more just seeing how well they're doing without my involvement is yeah. really rewarding so i, I want to pull back further cool. because of that um so yeah. i'm replacing myself in the company uh slowly not as the ceo but as any yeah. you know general manager type jobs and stuff like that yeah. um uh the the person starting next monday that's going to be replacing me for that um Steve, if you're here and listening to this, I'm so excited for this, man. Um, but anyway, that's awesome. Um, so we're going to continue growing that. And I want to focus on Inspire You. Another big one is Peak Peer Groups. Uh, Thane, Jody and I just yeah. are so parallel in everything that we're doing that we're setting up Peak Peer Groups. And uh, you were you presented for us last week with that. And Peak Peer Groups is really uh, in concept pretty similar to Inspire You on a group level instead of an individual level. So we're going to mm -hmm. be putting together groups of people and we're going to create peak U, which is going to be peak yeah. university. That's going to be educational for growing businesses. And we're tearing that out from zero to 500 is a startup. And I, I have a logic with business. doesn't matter what industry you're in. 
I don't know what the statistic is, so I'm not going to give a percentage, but fundamentally businesses are identical. The commodity that we yeah. create is the yeah. difference. The systems that we put in place to manage the things are going to be different industry to industry, but what we're managing at the root is it, it's all the same. The fundamentals are the same. So zero to 500 is a startup category. I don't care if you've been in two in business for two months or 20 years, you're in a startup category as far, yes. as, far as the way we're looking at it from this at the zero to 500,000. 500,000 to a million, you're getting into your kind of stages that you either hit, have to hit at a adolescence or mature business stages, or at least start learning how to get to either one of those um, because you need to start hiring help. You, up to 500,000, you're the owner operator, you're selling, you're building, you're m producing the commodity, you know, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, half a million to a million, you need people to start doing that stuff. You need somebody yeah. to sell things for you. You need to pick what you're going to focus on. Are you sell? Are you focusing on operations or are you focusing on sales? Which at the end of the day, sales is an operation too. So that brings us to the next one. Once you're 1 million, that's when you start getting things in place. That's when you start getting delegations in place. And that's when it starts getting really fun and powerful. The next hurdle is 3 million. You have no comprehension of how expensive it is to get from 1 million to 3 million until you go through that gap. And hiring yeah. people. And we're not talking labor and hiring positions. The wrong people and rehiring. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hiring the wrong. I, I like that you threw that in there. But we're not talking labor positions for, you know, yeah. 18 to 25 bucks an hour. I mean, we're talking 50, 60, $70,000 yeah. a year management yeah. positions that you, you have to be paying a lot of money for. Then you have to implement the right systems. You have to get the processes developed and all that stuff costs a lot of money. But if you do it right at a million dollars, your net margin might be 1%. But if it's done right at a million, by the time you get to three million, you don't have to change much. And that net margin is going to be 20 to 25 percent. So yeah. scale that first and then grow into it to the three million. The next group yeah. that we're focusing on is the three to six million range, because that's when you have to start duplicating everything you did from one to three. You have to do again and you have to have multiple people doing the same roles. And then the next gap is the six to 10 where you have to triplicate and you're, you know, just continuing to build. And that, that's kind of where we're capping ourselves currently because the experience yeah. that we have with the people involved only goes up to 10 million. And we firmly believe that if we don't have it, we can't give it away. So we're only giving away yeah. things that we've experienced and that we truly know that we have value to add. And with that, we're going to bring other people in. And we're, as we bring yeah. somebody in that has a 10 to $15 million company, then yep, there we go. We're going to extend that because that person knows that area of it. Um, so yeah. that, that was really exciting too. We're doing a lot of work. We're meeting for about three hours a week, uh, one hour on Monday and two hours on Fridays, or I might have that backwards. doesn't really matter though. Um, <laughs> we're meeting for three hours a week developing and um, it's, it's just really powerful and really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome because you, you look back and this, this all started with, with a love for landscaping and then yep. a, a desire to improve and be, be really good in business. And um, I'll and throw in that. I'll, I'll throw ahead. in their very supportive parents too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Young age. <laughs> there you go. That's true. That's true. That's true. If nothing else, the encouragement at the beginning that yep. but it sounds like it was a, a, a good, a good solid support system there as well. But it is, it's really great to hear, to hear your story and how the, the most important thing, like you said, the how to learn. And then just continuing to apply that and can apply it in business and then apply it in personally. And then how you found then and as you personally develop, how it helps everything. And now you're focusing on that yourself and helping others do it and seeing your business flourish from it and your other businesses go from it, start up and, and get those going too. So that's cool, man. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And, you know, you, you hit a really key uh, point there. Everything's parallel. You know, what we do in business, we can do in our personal life. What we do in our personal life, we can do in our professional life. And our professional life and business life are kind of separate because it depends on what, how you're looking at that. Um, mm -hmm. But everything's parallel. Once we learn the skill set in one area, we just have to mold it a little bit and apply it to a different area. And it works exactly the same. It's really, really cool. Yes. Yes. So good. Well, Scott, it's been awesome talking to you. Like you said, we could sit here and talk for two or three hours. I know <laughs> without even thinking about it, but, but we're going to, we're going to wrap up now. And I just wanted to say, thank you so much for being here today, sharing your, your journey, how you've come through this. And man, I am just, I, I I'm so looking forward to, to stopping back and talking with you again in a couple of years and just seeing, or even a year, heck, I don't know, whenever you want, but <laughs> 
to talk about this some more because I really love your fire and your your desire to learn. Like you said, that learning is the is the most important thing that that you have learned and you're applying it, and that's cool. So thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks for inviting me. This was a blast, Damon. I'll come back anytime. I, I really appreciate you, and you know, I, I appreciate your mentorship. We've only known each other for a couple months, but you've been very impactful as well. So I appreciate you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I won't say appreciate again, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Thank all right everyone <laughs> have a great evening we're done for today we'll be back again on thursday <laughs>